USA Things took a rally turn as hundreds of teens took advantage of a $4 movie day, prompting a massive response from law enforcement. We just assembled and went. And this was not the only theater in Metro Atlanta that saw violence. Hello and thanks so much for joining us for Fox 5 News Dash at 11. We want to get you right to that breaking news. A day that was meant to celebrate going to the movies ended in mayhem at a pair of theaters in Metro Atlanta. Now, a number of theaters participated in National Cinema Day. It really lowers ticket prices for all screenings to just $4. Well, please say that promotion led to hundreds of teenagers gathering at AMC South Lake 24 in Clayton County. News Dash reporter Joy Dukes joins us live outside the theater. Joy, you spoke with investigators what are you learning tonight yeah eric uh, good evening to you there was a massive police presence here at the uh, amc in morrow as a stampede of moviegoers uh, left and flooded the exits here after reports of shots fired now, as you can see the leftover debris and damage from the chaos a broken ticket machine a broken light pole trash and personal items left behind as people ran for safety now tonight as you mentioned there this was one of hundreds of locations observing the company's national movie night out offering four dollar tickets to moviegoers Amaro police tell oh, us God. there were units here initially as a part of that and then around 8 15 a deputy at the front doors reported shots fired inside the building now from there officers from every agency in clayton county responded here tonight and helped clear the building within about 40 minutes found no shell casings or anything to indicate any shots fired, uh, which doesn't rule out the possibility of someone maybe shooting a revolver or maybe it could have been fireworks or something like that. Shots fired in a building containing hundreds of people at a business, like a movie theater, sure, we're gonna respond uh, swift and sure. Now, police tell us while this was a false alarm, they were proud of the collaborative response tonight. Uh, we asked if there was any indication that this might have been a social media prank of some sort. Uh, they say that the investigation into what happened here is ongoing, and they will be uh, checking social media to try and get answers to that question. Now, the theater is closed for the night, so unfortunately for those who had later movie showings, they were uh, unfortunately turned around uh, and told that they may or may not receive a refund. AMC is supposed to be uh, releasing a statement uh, or at least giving people a little bit more information about what they're going to do if they were not able to make it uh, to their movie and take advantage of the discount there but that's the latest here tonight live in clayton county joy dukes fox 5 news yeah joy it's supposed to be a night and a day of fun and really unfortunate for those who just wanted to have a good time thanks so much well a similar incident took place inside the regal cinemas at arbor place mall where 10 teenagers were taken into custody for fighting Police say they received reports of gunshots inside the mall, but officers were able to quickly determine that a store sign fell and hit the ground while the teens were fighting. The mall was temporarily evacuated as police investigated. Thankfully, no one was injured, but the theater was eventually shut down for the remainder of the day. Other big stories today, an argument outside a Mexican restaurant in College Park ended in gunfire and a woman dead. It unfolded outside the Cozumel Cantina. That's on Old National Highway. Police are still gathering information, but a restaurant employee we talked with says a family was celebrating a birthday when two of the guests went outside. But when they tried to come back inside, the security guard would not let them. That's when some sort of an argument took place and gunfire was exchanged. So far, police have not issued an official statement on the incident. In southwest Atlanta, a man was found dead inside a crashed vehicle that was located on Cascade Road. Now police are just looking into how he got there. It was around 1 this morning when officers found a man who had been shot in the head. He was taken to a nearby hospital where he was officially pronounced dead a short time later. First responders pulled a man's body out of the Peachtree Creek River earlier today. He was spotted floating in the water nearby the Lakeshore Crossing apartment complex. The Fulton County Medical Examiner's Office pronounced him dead at the scene. So far, there's no word on the exact cause of death. APD says the incident is under investigation. It happened Friday night just before 11 when a group of juveniles were caught breaking into cars on River Oak Terrace. Police tell us at some point one of the suspects took out a gun and started firing at the homeowner. And that's when the homeowner fired back, hitting a 16-year-old in the head. 
One woman says she heard four gunshots. Stupid then kid. Then we'll check out what happened. It's sad because people work too hard. Entirely too hard for the things they have for these young men or these young guys to get out here and be breaking in people's cars and people's houses. Now we're told the team was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Police have not released descriptions of the others involved. Well, Atlanta at Moreland Avenue Friday morning and robbed the clerk at gunpoint. Police say he demanded several items before walking away with only a vape pen and a bottle of water. He was last seen driving off in a black Chevy Colorado. Anyone with information being asked to contact police. All right, on this Sunday night, let's get to outside for in three different states, others wounded. In Choctaw, Oklahoma, a teenager died. Two others hurt in a shooting Friday night at a high school football game. Take a look at the moment chaos broke out. What is going on? What's happening? I have no idea what's happening. What is going on? No, we've got people shooting. Oh my God. Spectators and fans running and ducking for cover, some lying down on the field as shots rang out on the visitor's side. A 16-year-old boy died of his injuries at Choctaw High School. Two people shot are in stable condition, two other people suffering broken bones running from the scene. Police not yet making any arrests, but say they're looking for a person of interest. In Chicago Friday night, two women shot and wounded Friday night during a White Sox baseball game at Guaranteed Rate Field. This is footage from the closed circuit cameras. You can see a group of people looking down at something as other fans carry on without noticing. One woman shot in the leg in fair condition, the other refusing medical treatment. Police not sure if the shots were fired from inside or outside the ballpark, but add that at no time was there an active threat. And in Jacksonville, Florida, a racially motivated shooting leaving three people dead. Tonight, the white gunman identified as 21-year-old Ryan Palmiter, who left behind detailed racist writings before walking into a Dollar General store Saturday, opening fire, killing three black people, and then killing himself. The Jacksonville sheriff calling Palmiter's manifesto the diary of a madman, adding his weapons were purchased legally. Police say there's no evidence he was part of a larger group. The U.S. Justice Department investigating the tragedy as a hate crime. Well, a question tonight, $7 million, the former president's campaign says $7.1 million have been raised since Thursday when he was booked at the Fulton County Jail in Georgia on charges that he schemed to overturn the 2020 election in the state. He's the first former president in U.S. history to have a mugshot taken. While Trump described his appearance Thursday as a terrible experience, his campaign immediately seized on its fundraising power, creating merchandise featuring his historic mugshot. Don Sundquist, a Republican twice elected as governor of Tennessee, also serving 12 years in Congress, dies at 87. He died Sunday morning, according to family members, following surgery and a short illness. Sundquist never lost an election in eight tries in Tennessee, six for Congress and two for governor. But he emerged as a divisive figure during his final years in office as the state feuded over whether to establish an income tax. In the nation's capital, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy suggesting an impeachment inquiry of Joe Biden is becoming more likely. He called it a natural step forward as Congress soon returns to Washington after its summer break. McCarthy saying an impeachment inquiry, in his words, provides Congress the apex of legal power to get all the information it needs. McCarthy not committing to an impeachment vote or a timeline for action. Agencies view the campaign as aimed at silencing overseas dissidents. Beyond that, Beijing also asked Micah to build a dossier on a Uyghur activist abroad. In 2017, Micah was asked to obtain information on then U.S. based president of the World Uyghur Congress. He also allegedly tried using his Canadian law enforcement contacts to aid China in securing the release of Huawei's CFO, Meng Wenzhou, in 2021 and sought to track down a Chinese fugitive living in New York City. Canada has long accused China of meddling through illegal police stations and targeting its lawmakers. 
Now, Micah faces two charges. Each of them carries a maximum sentence of two years. More than 80 bills to protect U.S. land. Lawmakers in 33 American states are pushing to regulate foreign ownership of U.S. real estate. They are worried that Chinese entities are amassing swaths of farmland near sensitive military spots, posing a national security risk. NTD's Sam Wong has more details on that. On the local level, lawmakers across 33 states have put forth 81 bills this year, all aiming to restrict Chinese citizens from buying properties near military bases. Some of those bills are now passed in states such as Alabama, Idaho, and Virginia. Those in support see the land as a national security interest, noting that the Chinese regime could use the land to spy on critical U.S. infrastructure nearby. Additionally, they also fear that the country's food supply could be in jeopardy if too much agricultural lands ended up in the hands of foreign entities. The bills gained attention back in February following a Chinese spy balloon flying across the U.S. before Washington shot it down. Sam Wong, NTD News. Two small cities to the south of Beijing, both engulfed by record flooding since late July when Typhoon Doksuri roared into China. More than a million people have been displaced, while full fatality counts remain unclear.